this has always been something that we look forward to every Christmas, every time that the holiday season comes back around. We know we're going to grandma's house and this cake is coming out. You ready to dig in? Yeah, I got my slice. Yum. My name is Kalidas Wilson. I am the mother of four beautiful, accomplished daughters. And this is my number two daughter, Lulu. I hear all the time that Lulu has my face. We do have this crazy dynamic. Like, we mm -hmm. really like the same things. Yeah. We like the same clothes. Yeah. That we like the same foods. We. I'll show her new music. Yes. I'll like play something in the car. I'll like, Mom, I need to put this on your Spotify Yeah, playlist. like, you need to have yeah. this new song, yeah. and I'll teach her the new dances and stuff like that. Yeah. As a kid, Lulu was very self-isolating. She could play by herself for hours. I think I was always kind of an old soul, so I loved being at Granny's house because there was this extra room no one was using, and the just see two little old people. So I spent a lot of time like, kind of picking up stuff from her. And so she taught me how to bake this red velvet chocolate cake, you know, and it's something that's been passed on traditionally, generation, generation. I would be there to stir and lick the spatula and uh, like watch her work and you know be there and making mess as she would say like getting stuff all over creation and that was just kind of like how we bonded was for us to be in that kitchen together so the story with the baking is that my mother at about age six she started walking to her aunt's house and that is what aunt Mally was famous for were cakes and she talked about Aunt Mally whipping these cakes and these bowls and using a wire whisk and getting all this air into them so they would rise and she would bake these three layer cakes and how she was just so fascinated by it. Mm -hmm. So that's how that red velvet cake was born. Ready to yeah. finish it? Yeah. Oh, you're supposed to be putting it on the cake. More. You're supposed to you put, put it on, on the cake. I think for me, sharing my meals with you and with my sisters, like, I think it comes to the fact that, like my grandmother, my love language is acts of services. So I'll cook and I'll have meals with my family. And I feel like all these conversations we have at this dinner table, man, like it's insane. And it's just that coming together, that unwinding at the end of the day and to like do those check-ins and be like, so what's going on now? And to really get an answer. I don't like surface level small talk. We don't do that uh -huh. in our house. We get deep, we get philosophical, yeah. we get to the nitty gritty, yeah. you know? And I think having those meals together is how we facilitate that connection. I've been very blessed to have this home where I have four sisters and I have a mom and I have a grandma and I have like, a, I'm surrounded by these really strong women. And I go out and I meet my friends and they're just, you know, really struggling with society and with their own self images. And they're just kind of like, oh, you know, I have all this indecision and I'm insecure and, you know, I don't know what to do and I'm overwhelmed. And then I bring them to my house and then the, we'll have like these, you know, these therapy sessions at our dinner table, which has always been our tradition. We've had so many different conversations over the years. I think the thing that I've kind of needed a lot after I graduated from college in 2018 and like have been starting to like figure out my, my place in the world and starting to get on with being Adulting. an adult. Yeah, <laughs> has been that um, you can always choose again has been the, the, the I funny. knew she was gonna make me cry. I, I'm just, I don't even, well, anyway, I'm just gonna keep going. Listen. Yeah, just, <laughs> Cause I think together. for me, it's been like that fear of making a choice that you feel like it's a permanent choice. And so, you know, it felt that way when you're going into college and you're choosing a major, and then it feels that way when you pick a job and that freedom of being like, you can choose again. Like you can have that, that, knowing that mom is always going to be there to support you and love you no matter what choice you it's end up making. It's all going to work out just It's going to work out, yeah. It's all going to work out. You are so messy. You are making a mess. You are you. making you a see, mess. See, this is the problem. You are okay, making you a mess. You got to start in the kitchen young. I'm the expert here. I feel like red velvet is Southern. Yeah. Um, my mother growing up in Texas, her family lineage being from Texas, yeah. it is very Southern. Yeah, okay. I definitely categorize it as soul food okay. because it's good for the soul, it comes from the soul. 
you know, and it's something that's been passed on, you know, traditionally, generation, generation. We use the same I know ingredients. that, yeah, some people, like my mother's red velvet has the quirk of having a couple of tablespoons of coffee in it. Mm -hmm. Teamwork makes a dream work. So growing up, I wasn't a big chocolate person. I was more of like the gummy, sweet, flavored, yes. sugary stuff. But so being with her and like seeing all the energy she put into it, you know, I was like, okay, let me give this red velvet cake a try. Cause it's chocolate. I knew it was chocolate. I saw her put the Hershey's in there. Like I knew it was chocolate. And so I ate it and I was like, oh my God. What am I doing? I need to rethink. I mean, my, me whole life, me my whole six, life. Me and six, right. Been having an existential crisis. Like, this is, I, have I been doing this wrong? Am like, I missing right. something? Right. You ready to dig in? Yeah, I got my slice. It's your turn. Oh, it looks so good. Everything that she made was gold. Everything she made was the best. And so this red velvet chocolate cake, it made me appreciate chocolate because I can tell how much she loved it. Oh my God, it's oh. so good. <laughs> This has always been something that we look forward to every Christmas, every like time that the holiday season comes back around. We know we're going to grandma's house and this cake is coming out. Does it make you want to sing a holiday song? Santa Claus coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not shout. I'm telling you why. When I think of Hershey's, I think about that box of cocoa powder the Hershey's cocoa powder. And once the aluminum foil is cracked, it becomes a million different things over the holiday season. The favorite things are hot chocolate in front of our fireplace mm -hmm. and our red velvet cake. I think, when I think of Hershey's, I think of Christmas. You know, I think of the, you know, the ad with the little kisses, making the little bell song. Oh, they're dingling! Yeah, oh, different styles yeah. of kisses they have. Like, but I usually just think of Christmas because I think of, you know, Granny going and getting the Hershey's cocoa powder box to make yeah. the red velvet cake and her having the little, you know, Hershey's, you know, kisses everywhere all over the house. And you stick your wrappers it. everywhere, right? Yeah. She would hide the candy wrappers in between the couch cushions. Yes, yes, yes. But like these kisses, like if I had some, I I would like unwrap them and eat them and unwrap them and eat them and then like stuff them. Ta da! A well wrapper. I could have another piece of candy because I didn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any candy. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm gonna do something nice for you. So I'm gonna give you the first square. The first tiny square. You get yes. like there's. Mm -hmm. It's already been not like the row because normally when people eat the Hershey bar, they go by rows. They don't. Yeah, you're gonna go by square. Okay. You're eating my chocolate, you're going by square. There you go. Boom. Easy, easy, Done. easy. No Done. problem. And then I get the one in the middle, because I'm the middle child. But you don't put the whole thing in your mouth at one time. You did. Mm -hmm. 